The protagonist is Mamie. It's all about Mamie, her emotional journey. I'm not interested in going into these tributaries. Of, okay, that's really what we want. That's why we, that's why we reached out to you. I said, okay. There will be no physical violence against black people on screen in my version of this film because I'm not interested in relishing in that kind of physical trauma. Yeah, 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 for, absolutely, yes. It's like, damn. And so, okay, we're gonna begin and end in a place of joy. We need to see some joy in, them. yes, that's what we want. That's why we want you. People are always trying to dehumanize us kill us, um, gaslight us, tell me that I'm not enough, that I am not worthy. It is a political act for me to tell a story that centers the humanity of a black woman, regardless of what the story is about, regardless of the genre. The story can have absolutely nothing to do with racism or sexism, but just seeing a black woman exist freely on screen is a radical act. And I'm very intentional about that. I mean, I believe that part of Mamie's activism was her standing unapologetically in her worth, in the worth of her son, in the worth of black people, in her humanity, in her son's humanity, in the humanity of black people, and standing in that unapologetically and to do that in the face of such white supremacist capitalist patriarchy is extraordinary. It's extraordinary to do it now. It's extraordinary to do it in 1955. And I think that that's part of what makes her so incredible. Most of us would not know who Emmett Till was if it weren't for Mamie. And so there was so much about her life. There was so much about the nuances of the time period in terms of the Citizens Council, in terms of Brown versus Board of Education. There was so much context to the story and to the time period that I had no idea about until I was really doing research for this film, Till. Um, but a lot of that I didn't learn in school. And I think a lot of people don't learn about it in school. You know, we just get like a footnoted version, if that. Amy was very aware and intentional about the power of the image. And this was a time when TV was just starting to get even more popular and even more accessible, right? And so she was, I think Mamie was very intentional about being able to use that to spread the word and to spread her message and to really bring a level of awareness that would result in a level of change and, and activism um, and to galvanize people into doing something. I wanted to make Emmett human. He was a boy. He was a boy and he did not care. He was not thinking about racial politics. He just wanted to play and laugh and make jokes and live and be. And so it was really important to me that that is the perspective in which we are focusing on when we're with Emmett. And except, but we, when we're with Mamie and Emmett, we're able to see what Mamie is trying to shield him from and how completely oblivious or unaware or uncaring he is of some of those kinds of dangers. So in the beginning of the film, Mamie is very intentional about trying to mask him from this racist security guard in the in Marshall Fields. You know, this is a place that they've gone to many times before and he just wants to go buy a wallet and she doesn't want to she doesn't want to tarnish that very pure experience with this really ugly reality. You know, and so it was really important to me that we're able to see those different layers, to see what Emmett is being shielded from, while also kind of living in his own kind of childish kind of innocence as well. Dr. T.R.M. Howard was an unsung civil rights hero whom I had never heard about until I began research for this film. And I was really sad and shocked that I'd never heard about him. And I think the majority of people have never heard of who, of Dr. T.R.M. Howard. He was a mentor to many of the civil rights icons that we know of today. 
and he was a self-made multimillionaire who used his money to help finance protection for many black people who who were either trying to migrate up north or who participated in the trial um, um, against JW and Roy. He used his money to help build Mound Bayou, a community that I also hadn't heard about until I started research for this film. But he helped build an all black town that was really rooted in black empowerment and black ownership. And he was also very active in politics and he created the Regional Council for Negro Le Leadership and he was very active in voting rights efforts. When he first met Danielle in person, I played the song that plays in the opening of the film, Sincerely, by the Moon Glows. And I just played it on my cell phone and he, he just gets up spins Danielle around and they just dance. And they had, he, he just was so comfortable in his skin. He was so comfortable and confident in who he was. And that is what Emmett embodied. He had such a confidence about him, such a carefreeness about him, such a joy about him. And Jalen really embodied all of that. Danielle Deadweiler is a star. Danielle was made for this role. She is one of the most gifted actors I have ever worked with and I have ever witnessed. And I knew nothing about her <laughs> when we were casting. Like we, we looked at so many actors. I mean, so many actors. And then after a couple months, I watched an audition tape of Danielle Deadweiler. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> what? Her audition tape was like making me feel so many things. I was captivated by her. She is craft driven. She does the work and is so invested in doing the work and doing the work excellently. Every single take, every single take that Danielle did on Till was great. <laughs> I mean, and she gave adjust, like she took adjustments, you know, like she wasn't just doing the same thing over and over and over again. You give a little adjustment and I mean, it's a whole other kind of performance. So, I mean, she's, a, she's an editor's dream. She's a director's dream. She's an actor's dream. I mean, she's a cinematographer's dream. I mean, my God, the woman is gorgeous. And, and she's a star. She is a movie star. Well, Alma was Mamie's mom, and Alma was someone who was the matriarch of the family. You know, um, Emmett and Mamie had a kind of brother, more of a brother-sister relationship. And so um, after Emmett's lynching, Mamie kind of stood up in a matriarchal way, in a way that she hadn't before. Um, and at that same time, Alma broke down and she couldn't kind of stand in that kind of matriarchal way. Mamie had a matriarchal kind of role and Mamie had to kind of step up for, the, for, for them both. Um, and in a way that was a really interesting kind of role reversal between the two. But Alma was always somebody who was an anchor for Mamie, you know, and, 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 and was kind of the disciplinarian in the house. And, and so it was really important for me to kind of show the complexity in the relationship really happens when that role reversal starts to happen. Um, and Whoopi was somebody who, you know, it's Whoopi Goldberg. She's an incredible actor and um, she was not attached to play Alma. Like I, it was a role that I offered her and I asked her, would she, you know, would you want to do it? And she said it would be an honor, you know, to be even considered for the role. And I was like, all right, Whoopi, I'll consider. There were so many, people who were a part of black freedom movements, civil rights movements, this story, who show up in the film, and I wasn't able to include everybody, but you know, one of, one of the people is Medgar Evers and Merle Evers. Um, you know, to, to watch this film, knowing what will happen to Medgar eight years after this is harrowing. 
And I think if you know what's going to happen to Medgar eight years later, I think it, 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 it really kind of deepens his character and your understanding of him even more and his commitment to the movement even more. Um, but it was really important that I also show people like Medgar, people like Murley as human beings. I mean, I, one of my favorite scenes in the film is the scene between Murley and Mamie drinking tea. And, and um, to watch that scene, especially knowing what will happen to Medgar eight years later, it's, it's chilling. I mean, I think I get chills just thinking about it, but also it just shows two black women being and I'm really excited about showing all of these different kind of civil rights icons as people. I'm really, really excited to have been given the opportunity to make a film that is rooted in the humanity of black people and is artful and it's crafted and it's cinematic and it's relatable and accessible. And that I believe that so many people, regardless of your race, regardless of your gender, regardless of what your background is, you are going to connect on a human and emotional level to this black woman on screen. And that gets me so excited. And I'm really, 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 really proud of that. Thank you.